<clears throat> Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Ooh. So I want to talk about where do you start as a new documentarian. Um, and actually, act, after I've worked on this a while, I think this is more of a craft rather than an art. There's a lot of skills involved, um, and I really hope that I can sort of impart some of those to you. But before I talk about this, I want to talk about myself. This is me <laughs> at the start of my career, very eager, not knowing a whole lot, bumbling, but really wanting to learn. I think this is me now, have some experience, want to train you, and I'm hoping to help you avoid the documentation equivalent of pointing a lightsaber at your face. <laughs> but another thing I want to say is that all of what I will tell you is true from a certain point of view. And it's my point of view, it's my experience, I think it's widely applicable, so let's go with that. And when I was thinking about the presentation, what I wanted to talk about, I want to talk about something obviously that I knew. What have I done before? I realized I've done this five times before, or I've come into a company, been the first documentation person, the docs guy, to set up documentation, doc set from scratch, build a documentation team. And I figured at that point, I probably have something to say about this. So who are you? Probably the first person in a company who is responsible for documentation. Um, maybe a tech writer? Quite possibly not. To someone, you now have responsibility to make the documentation awesome. You've been asked to solve problems and determine what's required to create documentation for your users. Why is this difficult? It's a wide open field. You're the first person. You might not have a lot of support, if any. There's a lot of room for failure. And Having too many options is really paralyzing. You just sort of just don't know where to go. When I was working on this talk, I've actually started a few times. I got part way, stalled out, got part way, stalled out, got part way. I've rebuilt it multiple times. I realized that what I was trying to do is distill everything I knew about technical writing into 30 minutes. And that's completely ridiculous, because it'll take like at least 45. So, I was getting stuck, and you're thinking, yeah. I realized I had to triage my own presentation on triage, light bulb moment. Focus on what's most important. So even though I've done this multiple times, I still have to remember to actually do it. So documentation triage. Identify critical, high-value documentation needs. What do you absolutely have to do now? Prioritize ruthlessly. Be, be brutal about that, be honest. <clears throat> Good enough planning. You do need to plan. That's kind of a myth that in the triage, you just go and you write and you're done. No, you need to plan, but good enough. Write quickly, improve later. There's some quotes that I have lived by through my career. One of them is, perfect is the enemy of the good. I prefer this version. Perfect is the enemy of done. And, and I've seen this too many times. I have no idea who said this. I can't cite it, but yes. But this means that your documentation, well, no documentation is perfect. Your documentation will be less perfect. It will get better. But if you're accepting good versus done, you need to accept minimum viable documentation. Good is done. Readers is QA. Oh, and that's scary. And if you're asking the readers to be QA, that means you need to give them a feedback path. You need to, they have to have a way to get you that feedback. You need to accept it. Um, also, you'll make rules as you need them. On day one, as the new documentation person in your company, you don't need to write a style guide. You are the style guide. It's you. <coughs> what happens is, as you need this, then you'll start building it out. You'll need a style guide once you have, bring more writers in, once you have more collaborators in, once more people are contributing to the documentation. 
but not on day one, probably not on day 10, probably not on day 100. <clears throat> you also need to accept all suggestions, comments, criticism, all feedback with honest, sincere appreciation. A um, couple of jobs back, I got feedback that said, we really want to give Neil feedback, but he seems to take it personally and we, he's kind of, well, yeah. I was probably doing too much, trying to handle too much, not handling it well, and again, taking the docs personally. And this was terrible because I wanted feedback, but I was presenting this, like, no, no, I can't deal with it anymore, stop. Yeah, don't do that. Because if you do that, people will stop giving you feedback and the whole system breaks down. Okay, so first, identify your documentation needs, which means, who are you writing for? Uh, who is your audience? What is their skill level? What do your audiences want? What do your audiences need? What do they need to, to use your product successfully to do their jobs? Um, you're not gonna know this. So how do you find out? You make friends. Make friends with people who work with customers. These are nice people. Product management. Why are you building the product? What's the business case for it? Why does it exist? Customer support, customer success. Clearly, they're dealing with customers all the time. They know what questions they're asking, what problems they're having. Marketing. Um, they probably have developed personas. Who are you marketing this product to? Similarly, sales, professional services. Who are you selling this product to? Who attends sales presentations, and what questions do they ask? This can be very important for you to determine who's your audience. Once you've done this, you get to go on a content hunt. And I just said there might be no documentation, but there might well be internal documentation, wikis, maybe even email threads. Trust me, customer support and professional services tend to love internal knowledge bases. Go make friends, go find those. Go just dig information out. Um, this is gonna take some work, and what you're gonna find is that the information is going to be in various states of util usefulness. Do a content audit. Basically list everything you found, and you know, redundant, outdated, trivial really means, oh hey, this information exists, but there's a better version somewhere else. Eh, outdated is pretty much what it says. Uh, it's a few product versions back. Things have changed significantly. Trivial just means you found a piece of content and it's two words or it's a sentence that says to change a password, the user clicks change password. Yeah, no one cares. Give it a level of effort and at a high level, which just means how much effort would it take to turn that into usable customer documentation? Also, add notes. Add notes about who you talk to, where you found it, you will come back a week, two weeks, six weeks later, have no idea why you gave something a medium rating. Take a lot of notes. Also, because you wanna share this with all of the people you've talked to. You wanna start promoting yourself, letting people know what you've done, getting feedback. Once you have done this, prioritize ruthlessly. Because now is when you can step back take a larger view of the information you've collected, and start planning before you dive into writing. So you do gap analysis. At this point, you've identified your audience, the audience wants and needs, the existing content, what state it's in, and so here's where you can start plotting this value level of effort. Um, I've seen this a number of times, uh, business value of level of effort. In some cases, the axes might be switched. Doesn't really matter. What you wanna start doing is, again, this is rough, this is subjective. Start plotting the stuff you found and where it might go. Like reset password instructions, probably easy to write, but not a lot of value there. Maybe the UI tells everyone what to do. Install guide, yeah, you know, it's a lot more value. Uh, release notes. Maybe someone says, oh, it would be great if we have an end-to-end -end solution guide to give to prospects. That would be awesome. And you really dive into it and realize, oh, that's a lot of effort. Like, super valuable, but a lot of effort. They might also say, some of our users need to know about data science before they use the product. Can you teach them all about data science? Yeah. Um, 
just kind of divide this up. This is your sweet spot. That's what you're going to concentrate on. That's where you want things to be. Here, you're, you're, just ignore it. You're never going to do it. There's plenty of places people can go to learn this. You don't need to teach them. And honestly, drop it. Ignore it. It's done. Um, eh, don't spend much time thinking about it. Not a lot of effort. <clears throat> this one's more interesting because as it is, it's a big project. You probably won't get to it. But you want to investigate what would it take to push that level of effort down, push it toward that quadrant. Can you get people to help? Can you get sales, professional services? Can you get someone to start helping you with content, with outlining? What can you do to get that over there? You can even do this um, for individual guides. Like This is an example, installation guide, same thing. Oh, list of files. Eh, well, OK, maybe. System requirements, probably pretty important. Install checklist, eh, more effort. Um, yeah, no. Um, someone's got one set thing, they jury rigged their systems together and somehow got it working. Good for them. <laughs> they can talk to professional services. Because as you see, yes, and there's things missing, like the actual install steps would be on there somewhere. Like, yeah, you're not going to do these. You can, with clear conscience, say, no, can't do it, not going to happen. You know, if you can get this easily, sure. And again, can you get your operations team to help you with this and get that over there? That's what you're looking for. And you want to record this information. Give each task an estimated level of effort and be honest. This could be in days, could be in weeks, number of sprints, it could be one of those uh, prime numbers that then record it. Find some way to do it, be consistent. You will be wrong, but you'll get better. Because you need to do good enough planning. Another quote that I've liked in a modified form I found out, a good plan now is better than a perfect plan next week, really means create a plan that's good enough to start using now. Create a good enough plan. Who is your audience? Um, what do they do? What do they need to know? This is the things you start and need to start recording. What do they need to know? When do they need to know it? Schedules are important. How will you create it? You'll need to figure this out. How much do you can you how much can you create? And again, be honest about this. Don't sign up for things that you can't do because you need to share this with people. Who can help you? Also very important. You want to record this information. You want to share this with your organization. And you'll probably get feedback. Some, you know, or as they say, um, <laughs> it's a joke. I love product managers. They help you align your docs with the product and business cases, but you also don't need to jump every time they ask. And they tend to have opinions. So stand by your plan, but also be flexible. You are a product owner, congratulations. Here's another hat you get to wear. The documentation is your product. You will work with other product stakeholders to refine your plan, to make it better. That's the point. Be able to defend your estimates and priorities, but also be flexible. Be willing to shift priorities. Um, don't give too much ground on your estimates. Again, you'll be wrong, but you'll get better as you improve. But don't sell yourself short. Defend respectfully. Accept feedback. Architect your docs. What does this mean? You're going to start small, but you will need to grow. All right, again, what's this mean? Things to think about. How many and what types of products are you supporting? Are you supporting on-premise, cloud? Are you supporting multiple versions? Um, do you need to support, do the, doc, do, the, does the, do the docs have to have versioning that matches the product versioning? What types of documentation do you need? Do you need API reference? Do you need code samples? Do you need user guides, install guides, 
end-to-end -end solutions, guys. What do you really need? This will determine the shape and scope of your product and also help you determine where it needs to grow to. Because you need to ask, or you need to ask and answer this question. What will your minimum viable documentation look like? What does it have to be now and in the future? Where do you need this to grow to? So now you can start writing, and you will write, iterate, improve. Start by researching. Be an investigative journalist. You need to go out and really hunt down this information. You must be active. Information rarely falls in your lap. You must pursue information. Information rarely falls in your lap. Also, don't accept our users will understand. That means someone's blowing you off, or possibly they don't know, but they don't want to say that. Uh, dig into that. Don't assume that. Let me also um, maybe reiterate this. Documentation is an active role. Um, I don't know if I said it. Information will not fall into your lap. <laughs> you must go out. You must pursue it. You must be active. Investigate. Collect the information. Talk to people. Challenge your assumptions. Challenge their assumptions. Now is when you can start writing and validate what you've written. Make sure that it's actually true. That's a pretty important piece of thing for documentation. Also, time to send to review. And maybe I mention this again. Accept feedback with a smile. Be grateful to get th feedback. Be thankful that other people want to help you contribute to the documentation and make it better. Yet don't push them away. It doesn't work well. Publish. Again, this is all about your tools. But once you've published, promote. Promote yourself. Promote the documentations. People need to know who you are, what you do, and what they can do to help. Because one thing is very true. No one is sitting on your documentation site clicking, clicking refresh and then saying, there's a new install guide. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't happen. I really wish it did. That'd be awesome. But um, no. OK. You need to go to your readers, both internal and external. Get your coworkers to help. Are your coworkers using and promoting your documentation? Which means sales. If possible, can they use a documentation for prospects? Can they send it out and use it as a sales tool? Say, hey, look, we've got docs on this. Maybe you want to read about it. Definitely, again, if possible, really good, helps with prospects. Customer support. Are they adding links to the docs and the tickets? If not, why not? Push them on that. Similarly, customer success, they're working through customer problems, and they can always say, oh, by the way, we've got this documentation. Here you go. Just remind users, have your coworkers, your collaborators, really remind the users the documentation exists. We'll write, iterate, improve. In an, in an early version, I had something where you're researching and writing and publishing, get feedback, and you go back to writing, and I realized, oh no, that's wrong. It's really this. You need to start and also end, evaluate, prioritize, research, write. When you get feedback, don't jump and go immediately back to fold that into the docs. You need to evaluate it, you need to prioritize figure out what's the value of that feedback, when do you need to do it, otherwise you get stuck. And I know you're thinking, but Neil, this is Dr. Triage. I need to get writing done. Lightsaber, face. <laughs> and me. <sighs> you must have a strategy. And, and again, this is Dr. Triage. What? Your process, again, must include evaluating, prioritizing all feedback. This lets you allocate scarce resources. You are the scarce resource. Again, you're the product owner. Your product is the docs. You are the resource to create that. Having a plan lets you do this efficiently and effectively. 
which also helps you reduce, feeling, uh, reduce the feeling of being overwhelmed and burned out. Because again, you have a plan. You can work to a plan. You have numbers that you are comfortable with, priorities that you're comfortable with, and you're not jumping every time someone asks. So again, you want to get out of that small uh, tactical loop where you're just doing writing, update, writing, update. You want to be strategic because that's going to help you grow and help you do better, make the documentation set grow. If you're in that tactical loop, the documentation set will be stuck. If you start planning strategically, you can really figure out where does it need to grow? Where do I need to expand? What do I need to do? And what's the longer term plans? This is my cat in a Spock shirt. <laughs> this has nothing to do with documentation triage. <clears throat> his, his name is Simon. <clears throat> but I needed to take a moment. Just had a little, little break here, so enjoy. <laughs> I think we've been through a lot already. This can seem overwhelming. It can absolutely be overwhelming when you're doing the work. Especially if, like some people, you're a bit of a perfectionist, and it hurts to make the compromises that you need to make. You'll be asking a lot of yourself, you'll be asking a lot of your coworkers, who will ideally become more than just people you inform about the docs, and people who really help contribute to the docs in terms of feedback, maybe eventually you can have them start helping and writing. But as long as you're, you're working with these people, they're the collaborators in the docs, bring them all in. The other issue is that, again, if you're someone who's a bit of a perfectionist, it's easy to focus on the negative and look at the gigantic mountain of tasks that you've been asked to do and the very small pile that you've been able to do. This is bad, but you can get into this mindset where it's, um, you know, Dread Pirate Roberts-ish. <laughs> and you see your boss doing this all the time. So, yeah, you got to get out of this mindset. Remember, celebrate success. Acknowledge what you've done. Acknowledge your accomplishments. Share them with people. Be proud of what you've done and optimistic about what you will do. Again, just look at your plans, hold them tightly, but this is something that you really need to acknowledge. Good job, I've done something. This is awesome, I've made progress. All right, let's sum up. What do you need to do? Identify what you have, what content you have, it might not be documentation. Again, could be email threads, could be internal wikis. What do users need? And then, of course, people are going to ask for a lot of wants. You'll need to separate those out. That's going to take some work. To really talking to a lot of people and figuring out what do my users really, 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 really need to know. <clears throat> and then start prioritizing. What's the gap between those, what they need, what I will be able to deliver, then also kind of where do the wants fit in there? <clears throat> Ooh, that was terrible. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Prioritize. <clears throat> be brutal and be honest. There is only so much you can do, and as well-intentioned as you are, there are only so many hours of the day and so many days in the week. You have to be very honest about what you can do. Plan. Okay. What is the minimum viable documentation? What does it look like? What will it look like in the future? Where does it need to go? Now you can write, but write quickly. Let people know that you've written. Again, if you're sitting in the corner, people don't know who you are, no one's gonna know how they can help, they need to know the docs are out there. No one's waiting for the docs, you gotta do it. And now you can make it better. Get feedback. Again, be appreciative. Thank people for giving you feedback. Talk to them, let them know that you've heard their feedback. If you can't get to their feedback now, also let them know that. Tell them why. Be very, I mean, look, we're documentarians. We can explain things. Explain things to people why, where their feedback is, what your plans are, 
really, they're your collaborators, they're helping you, let them do that. Reevaluate and always reprioritize. Again, you don't want to get stuck in that small tactical loop where you're just burning yourself out, writing and getting feedback and writing and getting feedback and just doing minor updates. You want to build the documentation as a whole and also you know, build what you can do, build what you want to do. So a lot of this, again, has is, is, been my experience, what I have done over these last five times. <clears throat> One thing that I have learned is, is building this experience that I want to share. That experience is learning what you don't have to do. And this might seem weird and kind of lazy, but a huge part of this, documentation triage, what you have to focus on, what can you just let go? And it might be hard, but there are some things that you will not get to. You're just gonna have to let them go, put them in the backlog or the backlog of the backlog of the backlog. One day someone might get to them. I know someone, I saw another um, presentation yesterday, someone had icebox, and that's great. Things that you're like, yeah, those are good ideas. Meh, we're not gonna do them. So, you have to accept you won't be able to do anything, everything, and that's okay. You will still do a lot. And at that, go triage your docs. <laughs>